Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do how to use undo, and not just the undo, but your history as well, which uh, deals with undo. Uh, so what undo is, is if you, make, if you make a change in your project and you don't like the change, you can undo it. You can take that, take that change back, it's not permanent. For example, if I select a clip here and I hit delete, that clip disappears, and if I want to bring that back, I go, oh crap, I didn't want to do that. You hit Control z on a PC, Command-Z on a Mac, and it will undo the move. Let's do a few different things here. Now, before we get too much into the undo here, I'm going to go under uh, a special little tab here. I'm going to go right, right, and right now I'm in the editing layout, and in the editing layout down on my uh, source, down on my project window here, you have all these different tabs here for this window space. One of them I can't see right now, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit this double arrow, which will show all of my tabs that are up in this window, and I'm going to go to history. So history is usually the last tab over. And what you've got here is a history of items that you've done. I just opened this project, so right now I don't have very much uh, history. I've only got, when I opened the project, I did a paste and a delete, and that delete is, no, the delete is no longer there. It's grayed out because I did because I did an undo. So let's do a couple changes here. I'm just going to grab some things and rearrange them. Let's grab this clip. I'm going to do Control k to cut. I'm going to select this clip right here. I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to uh, grab all these files here and I push these forward and drop it there. Now look what happens every time I make a move, you'll notice it is adding um, an action over here, an action that I did. Uh, let's delete the cross dissolve. Let's extend this clip. Let's go to the beginning of this clip and add a cross dissolve. Control D to add a cross dissolve at the beginning. And now look at this big list that it's creating here. It's creating this list of history that I've done here. And what you can do is I can do, if I want to undo all that, I can, since I've opened up the project, I can undo until I get to the very beginning when I open up my project. If I do Control Z, notice it grays out the one that I did and it goes one back. In history, I'm right here on the trim rather than on the apply transition. I can do Control Z again and again, and look at what this does. It starts graying out these items in my history, saying you're now at this point in history, and you still have these items uh, forward here, uh, past these here. So let's do undo, maybe we're right there. Okay, let's say now I change my mind. I want to have all those things back that I just did. Well, that's pretty easy. I can just move over. Well, first of all, you can do this. You can do control. You can actually do a redo if you want to. You can do control. Shift, Shift as a modifier key, Z will be redo. So Control Shift Z will do redo, and it's Command Shift Z on a, on a Mac. Once again, using Shift as a modifier key, it basically reverses it. So now if I do Control Shift Z, it's redo, and look what it's doing over here on my list. You see it performing those functions over here. And I'll do it again, Control Shift Z, Control Shift Z, Control Shift Z, until I get to the bottom of the list there. And now I'm back right where I started. But now another way of undoing here, let's say I want to do that without having to hit Control Z a bunch of times. What I can do is just go over to my history list and just go, let's go back to Razor All right there. I'm going to go click, and all those things were just undone right there, and we're back where we start. We had the undo back, for, back, back, to, back, to, it, back to in the previous spot. Now, if I want to bring all those back, once again, all I have to do is move down to the end of the list and click on Apply Transition here on the bottom, and it just did the redo on all these items. Now, all these items have been done. If I want to go to the very beginning, I just click here, and all that's been redone. If I go to the end, there you go, and so on and so forth. So that's the way the history works. Uh, just keep in mind that if I have all these actions done here, and I go to uh, my if I and I go to Premiere and I close it, and it says, "Do you want to save your changes?" I say yes, and I close the software completely. Once I close the software completely, I can go and open up my project file again. I can open. My, I'm going to open up Premiere again. So I've had the software completely shut down. This is important to know, and I'm reopening the software. Open up my latest project and I go to my history tab, notice all those things are now gone. Every time you close the software completely and reopen it, that history list is gone. This will keep adding to your history as long as your session is open. It will keep a, a huge long list of everything that you've done. If you sit down and work for eight hours and you've had the software open the whole, entire time, you will have this huge list open of all the items that you've done over the course of the eight hours. Once you close the software, reopen it, it's gone. And I'm not sure why, but that, that's, just the, that's just the way uh, Premiere works. And that's also why it's helpful to have your autosave uh, functions turned on, uh, which I will cover in the next episode. So if you have any questions, please post them, and thanks for watching.